All right, welcome back to Victor's Volkswagen. So today uh, we're going to, we just got done putting the gas tank back in the car, capped off the return line from the factory because we are no longer gonna use that return line. We're gonna go ahead and use a return line that's going to go to the new tank that we installed in the back of the car in the previous video. So uh, now we're gonna go get the axle beam back up into place, killer put, <laughs> brake lines on and then we're going to get this up connect the brake lines and then we'll go ahead and uh, bolt this back up so I kind of rigged up this wooden contraption if you can see and I don't know if it's going to work I haven't done it yet but we're going to try to line these up. hold on hold on we gotta go Go down a little bit. Okay. Just a hair. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, now bring her up. I think I'm gonna have to move this. Use your leg to jack up the car. Right there. Uh oh, I'm hitting something. Yep. Uh, I think I'm hitting the front bolt. You're clear on my side, for the most part. Well, yeah, now jack it up. Okay, I'm catching just a little bit here. Um, I don't want to strip the threads out. So. Let me give it a little bit more and see if I can wiggle it in place. Got my side in. Okay, he always got his side in. Oh, oh there we go. Now we don't help. forget the washers. Yep. Let's just get these loose as we might need some play with the brake line. So yeah, the wooden contraction <laughs> pretty much worked. Now we can probably jack it off a little bit more. Yep. Can I go a little bit more? Yeah, go on my side. Yeah. There we go. That helped me a lot. Do you get both ears in? Nope. I got it. You got to jack it up more for my side. Okay. Don't don't pry on that jack stand. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost there. Just it's just caught on the threads. I think I might be up a little bit too high, and that's why I'm pinching here. I think it got in. It's in, but it keeps catching. Oh, there we go. Alrighty. Oh, boy. This is what we're doing. We're pushing up the axle beam so we can get these studs in so i can't uh, see the camera i'll get my second one in get it started okay i'm good on my side. okay jack up my side i can't okay. get mine in there it goes okay that's good I got it started, so we're good. Okay, so now we can bring, get them, get them all the way to where the threads are uh, flush with the bolt, 
the net. It's really tight. I need a ratchet. Okay. Or an impact grip too. Just grab the little quarter drive impact. Okay. That'll run it in. Okay. So Keller's phone ran out of storage, so we lost a little bit of video. But so what we've done now, and Keller can kind of get underneath here. So we got this jack back up again. We got the brake lines connected. And now we got to get these shocks back up. So now I took the board that was off the front and I've just moved it just to the back. And you can see what we're gonna do is we're, the next thing we're gonna do is just guide these shocks right into place here with this board here. So we're gonna have to end up moving these shocks a little bit to get this to Okay, go ahead. Okay, we're good on my side. Okay. Well, it's not. It's not in the hole, or it's okay. in the hole, but it's not so all the way higher. up. Yep, go higher. Right. One more pump. I think that looks like it's in there. One more, on my side. Okay, that's that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna I'm gonna just put this bolt on. I'll yeah, set the camera down, but yeah, we'll we'll be right back. All right, so I got the bolt in. Got the other side, so. The axle beam's in, but we have to torque the bolts down. The at least the axle beam ones. Okay, you want to look it up? Yeah, we'll look it up. We'll be right back. All right, so we got the gas tank in, axle beams in, brake lines reconnected, and we torqued the bolts. So we looked it up. The uh, torque on the bolts that hold the axle beam up, the two on the sides is a 33 foot pounds. And then the, the lower shock bolt is also 33 foot pounds. So we got those all torqued up. So now I think what we're ready to do our uh, fuel line. Yeah. Or actually no, the, oh, we got to do those axles. I want to get this thing on the ground. Oh, okay. So we're gonna hook up the uh, CD axle. Oh, we don't have any grease. We, we, grease. we gotta get grease. Okay. We gotta get some CD grease and then we're gonna get the axles hooked back up so we can put this back on the ground roll it around a little bit but yeah we're making progress on the fuel lines killer's been working on this we're trying to figure out a way to get the injectors this thing this usually has a mounting bracket but it's not going to work with our setup so we're going to end up making a custom mounting bracket so we'll kind of do some filming of that but yeah we're going to have to run down to the uh, auto parts store get some cd grease and then we'll be back and keep going on it okay so we're back uh, we're going to connect uh, this uh, fuel hose to the fuel pump. So Keller's going to go ahead and cut it. Real easy. I love using pipe cutters. They are so easy to use. You just keep spinning around and around and around and kind of tighten it up and spin around and around and around again. And then when it gets loose, tighten it and spin it around. And aluminum's really soft, so it'll. Yeah. It'll cut it like it's nothing. Okay, so we'll put the compression fitting in. So ideally, you want to do this. Drop the olive, or the ferrule, or whatever you call it. Did you have to deburr that, or is it going to go on? It's going on. Yeah, I'm going to have to like, hammer that or something. It's really stuck on there. Yeah, I probably should have deburred it a little bit. That's not the end of the world. Not ruin the finish, I'm gonna use a plastic hammer. Well, no, this is not a show part. Okay, so that's all in there, and we'll just do this. And I'll grab a couple wrenches. So Keller was telling me, I asked him what the PSI was on this aluminum fuel line. Didn't you say it was about a thousand PSI? Well, it depends on the fuel line. Like it could be, you know, this aluminum stuff probably is rated for like 500 PSI. Yeah. So it's real high, way, way higher than what we would ever be running. So Sure, do to run common rail? And it's a lot cheaper than... Um, like rubber fuel line.
Yeah, that's not going anywhere. So we're not putting the fuel pump or the fuel filter back here. Uh, it's going up towards the front of the car. We just ordered a coupler so we can, uh, yeah. So Keller informed me that Bosch is no longer making these fuel pumps. Is it, what is it, 044? Yep. 044 fuel pump, they're not making it. So this company, Evil Energy, and I've seen, we've seen a few other ones. I'm sure they're kind of made in China, but we'll see. Didn't this one have a warranty on it though? Yeah, six months. Six month warranty. Even if this goes bad, we can always just put a different fuel pump on. Sure, there's Holly fuel pumps that even pump even more volume. But I think Keller was looking at around 350 horsepower on this engine. But if it ended up going up higher than that, then we might need to get a bigger fuel pump. Let's put two of these in here. Yeah, and there's there's you can actually there's two holes, so you could you could run two of them. Okay, well that's on there. All right, so there's the fuel pump, and then we're going to do, are we doing more fittings on the front tonight? I guess, sure, yeah. Okay, we'll try to do one more, and we'll make it time it. All right, so we're back. So we started laying in the fuel line. So this is high-pressure aluminum fuel lines. Uh, really nice, because it's pretty bendable. Um, so what we did is we took out the old fuel lines uh, that were there, so we utilized the same channel underneath the car to keep the lines up high, and then out of the way so nothing can hit them. So here's this here and we're going to end up um stubbing to this so we're going to do here and then in the back what we're going to do so if you can see the fuel line ran down where we talked about we have a rubber hose protecting it um, from any sharp edges and then we're going to connect it right here so what you have to do to bend this aluminum is fill it full of sand so we had some beach sand, dry beach sand, got up on top of the roof of the little funnel, like this, and slowly started pouring the sand in. It took a really long time, got it completely full, then we had it capped on the ends, and then we took electrical tape, and then you can literally bend this without kinking it, and it bends really super nice, and you can change directions and do all kinds of stuff. So that's where we're at now. We're just gonna go ahead and do our connections and uh, that's what we got done for today. And then we're, what are we doing tomorrow? We're gonna get something. Can't remember. Uh, it's like 90 degrees out, so we're kind of tired. Um, I guess we'll walk over to the engine bay because that'll probably remind us. Oh, the oil pan. Oh yeah, oil pan, we're doing the oil pan, yeah. yeah. So the fitting that we had an oil pan that we got from the guy that got us the engine in Primeville, but the uh, fitting did not match the uh, AN line fitting. So we were gonna have to get an adapter, but we didn't wanna do that. So Keller got a piece from the hardware store. We have another oil pan. We're gonna drill a hole in it. We're gonna weld this bung onto it so that it will mate right up to the AN line. So that's the return line that's going from the turbocharger to the oil pan. So we'll videotape some of that and hooking that up. And then we're pretty much done with all the fuel lines, right? Yep. Oh, and we got to build a bracket yep. to hold this tight against the injector. And a return line too. Return line. So we got a few more things. Uh, that's what we got done today. Uh, sorry we didn't film more of this, but this is pretty darn easy. It, 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 it bends like brake line. So it's really, really malleable. So, all right, tomorrow we'll get back at it. Thanks.